In 1960, the Green Bay Packers tragically lost the NFL championship to the Philadelphia Eagles. It was the fourth quarter and the Packers had led the game the entire time. They were so close, they could literally smell the championship. But in the final minutes of the fourth quarter, the Eagles pulled a touchdown out of thin air and won the game. And for the Packers, it was heartbreaking. All 38 players had to endure the pain of that horrifying loss until the first day of training camp the next year. And they believed the key to winning the championship that year was to learn and master advanced football tactics. But their coach, Vince Lombardi, had a much different plan. He started their training camp by famously holding up a pigskin and saying, gentlemen, this is a football. Lombardi was coaching 38 professional NFL players and teaching them the basics. He was treating them as if they'd never played football a day in their life. Lombardi was obsessed with the basics and the fundamentals. And the players started making fun of him saying, whoa, whoa, coach, slow down, slow down, we can't keep up. But Lombardi knew what he was doing. Six months later, the Packers met the Giants in the 1961 NFL Championship and they beat them 37 to zero. The moral of the story is, if you wanna win, master the basics. In my career, I've spent about $5 million on Facebook ads for my own products and I've turned it into $30 million in sales. And I can tell you 100% of the time, I kept it simple. So I'm about to show you a segment from a program that I used to sell called Digital Millionaire Coaching. And it's a lesson on Facebook ad basics. So if you're a total beginner, if you've never run Facebook ads before and you're just trying to understand like the basics of how this all works, this is for you. I sincerely hope you get value out of it. By the way, if you're new to the channel, my name's Dan Henry. I made $30 million with my online business and I make videos about what I learned along the way. Anyway, here's the segment, enjoy. Let's jump in. So right off the bat, let's take a look at this. What is this? This is a Facebook ad. So. Right here is my Facebook page name. When you run an ad, you run it from your Facebook business page. Mine is Dan Henry. Right here is the copy. This is the words in your ad that you're using to persuade the viewer to click to go where you want to go. This is the image, or you can use a video, or you can use a collection of video, uh, uh, images like a, a carousel. Um, you know, there's a variety of different... Um, variety of different medias you can use. And then this is the headline. And if they click either the image or they click the headline, they go to your landing page. And your landing page would be your webinar, your VSL, your core content, your book, whatever it is. And so again, page name, the copy, the copy is, is, you know, what you're saying in the ad, the image or the video and the headline. And generally people will click on this learn more button. They'll click uh, right here on the headline, meaning you know, that's, that's the, the call to action to get them to click, or they'll click on the image. Either way, it takes them to your landing page. In this case, for this ad, it's my uh, landing page to watch my webinar. All right, so this is an ad. These are the components of an ad. It's pretty basic. Now, let me go through and let me illustrate in terms of high ticket, how this works and what it really looks like from a bird's eye view. So this is my landing page. If you register, if you enter your name and email and you register on this landing page, you get to watch my webinar, okay? So when you go to this page, you get to register to watch my webinar. Now, when you watch my webinar, and by the way, again, you can use a case study, you can use a VSL, whatever you want. If you like what I have to say, you click that little red button there and you fill out an application to book a call. Once you fill out the application, it takes you to a time to choose, uh, or it takes you to a page to choose your time to talk to my team and, and get on the phone. And then once you select your time, it takes you to a page that tells you how to prepare for the call and just gives you some information like, you know, be in a quiet place, et cetera. You then get on the call and you buy. That's the flow, okay? So this right here from a bird's eye view is essentially your high ticket funnel. So I'm mapping that out so that you can see it. Now, in terms of advertising, cold ads are meant to send new prospects to your landing page so that they can register for your webinar, so that they can watch, so they can fill out an application, so they can book a time, so they can get on the phone and buy. That's what cold ads are. They're called cold because 
they're cold prospects. They're new people. And that's going to be one of, uh, you know, one of two of the types of ads you're going to run. These are going to be ads reaching out to new people. And this is going to be the majority of the ads that you're constantly coming up with, rotating, come up, coming up with new ideas for, getting new people into your pipeline. And then there's warm ads, also known as retargeting. And these are ads for people who have already registered and watched the webinar. So if they've registered and they got, and they got to the page, we're going to consistently send them back to the application. So imagine somebody sees an ad and says, hey, watch this webinar. So they watch the webinar. And then a day later, they see another ad that says, hey, I noticed you watched my webinar. Fill out this application and work with us. Or, hey, I, I noticed you watched this webinar, but you stay. You might still have this objection. Here's why this is not a problem. Here's how we can help you overcome this. Want to learn more? Want to work with us? Fill out an application. So these type of ads have information, videos, copy, et cetera, in the ad and takes them directly to the application page. And right here is exactly how I ran ads for the very first year I was doing high ticket and I made millions of dollars doing this. It's so simple. You just run new prospects to your landing page, get them to watch your core content, your webinar, your VSL, your case study, what have you. And then the people that have done that, you send them more ads that help them out, that you know overcome their objections, and you send them to the, to the same page that your webinar is telling them to go to. That's the book a call page. So everything revolves around booking a call. Now, I did start doing this as well, and this works really well. Let's say you have a piece of content and you can put it on a page like a blog post, right? Well, you'll notice here that this right here is, uh, you know, like a blog post. And then there's this big, huge box here that says, need more help, book your free strategy session with our office today and a button to do so. And so we can run ads to something like this. And then this, again, goes to book a call. So you can see the flow here. Everything revolves around booking a call. Whether we go straight to the book a call page or whether we go to a page that has content on it, which then goes to the book a call page, this is the flow. And one reason this works is because um, of the fact that people might read this blog post, watch this video, and then they go and they might watch two or three more on my blog, but every single one has a, has a button below it to book a call. So you can do this on a ClickFunnels landing page. You can do it on a blog, a WordPress site. Doesn't, doesn't really matter. It's the same idea of getting them to book a call. Instead of uh, going direct to call, you're going to a piece of content, which then goes to a call. You can also do this with student case studies. You could run a video of a student interview or case study in your ad and go directly to the uh, application. Or again, you could put that on a page, run the ad to here, and that goes to there. But what I'm trying to show you here is that the ultimate goal is to get new prospects to watch your core content and then retarget those prospects that have watched your core content and give them more content that gets them to book a call. Ultimately, it all ends in them booking a call. That is the high ticket strategy in a nutshell. It sounds simple, but that's all we're doing. We don't need to do anything else. Yes, are there more advanced ways to run ads? Sure, but I mean, simple is better. Ask any, almost in, in, in any art form, in any industry, the, the best will always say master of the fundamentals, simple is better, you know, keep it simple. And that's what, that's what we do. We just keep it simple. And this is what simple looks like. So this right here is a diagram of how not just Facebook ads work, but really most ad platforms work. You have three levels. You have a campaign, which is right here. You have an ad set, which is right here, and then you have ads, which is right there. This is a visual representation of the organization of how ads work in Facebook ads. If you don't understand this just yet, don't worry. You're going to learn this in layers. You're going to learn this, and then you're going to see the ads, and then you're going to see the, the, the technical, and by the time you get to actually setting them up, you're going to have a really good understanding of all of this. So what does campaign, what does ad set, and what does ad mean? Well, campaign is generally where you choose your objective. What does that mean? Well, I can say to Facebook, hey, I'm going to run this campaign and I'm going to put a bunch of ads in it. I'm going to target a bunch of different people. I want you to optimize for clicks or landing page views. That means Facebook goes, okay, I'm going to do my very best with my AI brain to optimize for people to click on your ad. You can also optimize for 
them to watch a video. So if you're, you have video ads, you can say, okay, Facebook, what make them watch the video? So Facebook's going to do all its little AI brain and power to, to show your ad to as many people as possible that are likely to watch your video. There are multiple different types of, of objectives. Here's the beautiful part. 99.9% .9 of the time, actually, really, for what we are doing here, 100% of the time, you're going to choose the conversion objective. What's conversion? Conversion means that, you know, Facebook is going to optimize and show your ad to people likely to convert. Convert meaning register for your webinar, opt in for your VSL, opt in to watch your case study. In other words, get from the landing page to the thank you page. That is a conversion. Just like filling out your application is a conversion. They hit the, the, the application page and they make it to the booked a call page, the, the booked page or the homework page. The, they've booked a call. That is a conversion. We're pretty much always going to be choosing, we, we are always going to be choosing conversion. So that's pretty simple. You just choose conversion. There's not much more you got to do there. Now with an ad set, this is where you choose targeting, budget, placements, where, you know, how much are you going to spend? Where are you going to show it on Facebook? Who are you going to show it to? And then within that ad set, you have your ads. So you can have multiple ads within an ad set. So for instance, this ad set right here might be targeting people who like Tony Robbins. And then you have an ad with different images, image A, B, C, and D. So that ad I showed you with me uh, rubbing my chin uh, on my on my pool patio, maybe maybe I use that same exact ad, but the only thing I change is I'm playing pool or I'm sitting, uh, you know, uh, on my couch or or I'm working on my laptop, whatever. It's just a different image. And this one over here is targeting, say, Brendan Burchard. So now I'm showing, you know, it's the same ads. I, I can do the same ads in here, but I'm showing them to this guy instead of this guy. All right. So campaign, I choose webinar conversion. I show my ads to Tony Robbins at say 50 bucks a day. And here are these different variations. So to, to go a little deeper in that, this is what it looks like for the, the way that I run ads and, and the strategy I recommend for high ticket. You have a campaign. I generally do two campaigns. I'm either doing a cold campaign or a warm campaign. So in other words, I keep all my ad sets and ads in, in one campaign for cold. And then I keep all my ads and ad sets in one campaign for warm. And so my ad account might look at, you know, for the first year again, when I didn't do anything fancy, I just had two campaigns. I had cold and warm. Simple. Okay. And, and again, um, this right here is where you select parameters. So I can choose what I want to, you know, in my, in my, uh, 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 targeting this person, that person, uh, what ages, uh, what am I trying to optimize for? Am I trying to optimize for webinar registrations or am I trying to optimize for book calls? The, those parameters are, cho are chosen here. And as you go through this and as you go through and you get to the Trello board and all that, you're going to understand this. So don't worry about understanding it fully right now. Like, well, okay, Dan, but how do I actually do that? Don't worry about it. Worry about understanding how it works right now and the fundamentals. So I, this, now this right here is my strategy. I will take one angle. Now, an angle is a general idea of what you're saying in your ad. So let's say I'm telling a story of how I met a friend at a conference and that, that friend uh, told me how he raised his prices and how he sold high ticket and how it changed everything for his business. And I, I went, oh, well, that's a great idea. You know, I'm going to try that. And I tried it and then I, you know, everything got better and my business blew up because I sold high ticket. That's an angle you know, a uh, friend at conference, right? Or the switch to high ticket. That's an angle. Another angle might be something like, you know, um, uh, uh, I bought a Tesla and I noticed how niche the Tesla was. It had vegan interior leather. The car was electric. It drove itself. And it and they're also the number one valued car on the market right now. If you go, go on the, uh, on the um, stock exchange, you'll see the Tesla is has the highest stock price of any car manufacturer. And what does that tell you? It tells you that the riches are in the niches. The more niche you get, the more money you can make. Okay, so now that might be the Tesla angle, right? Or the Tesla stock price angle, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So that's an angle. So what I like to do is inside an ad set, I choose one angle and one audience. So I might show the Tesla angle to Tony Robbins. And then within that, 
the, I do four ads. These four ads all have pretty much the same copy. Everything's the same. It's talking about the Tesla, but I have different images or I might have a different first sentence, but gen generally just the, the image is fine. And so that you have one angle Tesla, then you have four variations. And all this is, is just to have the ability to split test. And what that means split test is show different versions of the ad so that the ones that do better, you can keep running the ones that don't do so good. You can turn off more about that in a second. But you just want to have different variations, just like when you see a Doritos commercial or, you know, a commercial for Dosakis, the most interesting man in the world. You may see a 60 second version, a 30 second version. It may start out with a different, um, you know, scene, but it's all the Dosakis guy on a, safari, on a safari, right? That's the angle, safari. And then the different variations would be maybe how the commercial starts. And then you see that for a while. Then another angle might be the Dasaki's guy at a poker game. And again, you'll see a 60 second version. You'll see a 30 second version, et cetera. These are fundamental advertising basics that have been in play since before Mark Zuckerberg or Facebook existed. All right. These are fundamentals. And that is you show different variations of an ad to people. All right. So my strategy that I like is one angle plus one audience. So for instance, if I come up with the Tesla angle, I can, and, and I want to target Tony Robbins, Brendan Burchard, and, and um, I don't know, uh, uh, Oprah, right? So that is now six ad sets. Why? Because I, uh, sorry, three ad sets. Why? Because I have one angle, the Tesla angle, and three audiences that I can target. People who like Tony Robbins, people who like Oprah, people who like Brendan Burchard. Now, if I put in another angle, like the um, the conference angle, meeting a friend at a conference, I can now have six ad sets because now I have three audiences and two angles. So I now create another three ad sets targeting Tony, Oprah, Brendan, but this time with the conference angle, okay? So again, you can see how one idea for an ad can spawn multiple ad sets and then you times that ad set by four you know you might have 16 32 ads before you know it so you have plenty of of opportunities to find a winning ad so i hope this makes sense to you if it doesn't don't worry you'll you'll learn more about this as we go again i believe people learn in layers okay so this right here again ad set one angle, one audience, because we're taking one angle and we're testing it against one audience and we're using four variations to see if it works. So let's say we have a campaign and we have multiple audiences and multiple angles, okay? And each each ad set we're choosing to show to a certain audience and, and we're showing that audience a certain angle and, and these ads are different variations of that angle. You might find that some of the ads do well. And what do I mean by do well? It means you get a good cost per lead or you get a good cost per book to call, right? If you're paying $2,000 for a book call, it's going to be hard to make money. If you're paying $200 for a book call, it'll be easy to make money. You know, if your offer is $5,000 and you, let's just say that you have a 20% close rate, which isn't great, but it's not super, super terrible. If you take 10 calls and you pay $200 per call, you've paid $2,000. But out of those 10 calls, if you close two and you, you're tra and you charge 5,000, you've made $10,000. And so again, $10,000 minus the $2,000 you paid, that's an $8,000 profit. So even if, and, and, and guess you can get $50 book call. If you have great ads, you can get $50 book calls. That's, you know, but again, if you, Pay, spend two thousand to make ten thousand, eight thousand dollar profit. That's fantastic. You can pay two hundred bucks per call. Heck, you, you know, let's say you have a ten thousand dollar offer, you can pay even more. Okay, because again, you you're getting them on the phone and you're closing them on high ticket. Now, a lot of times you'll start out with a high. You might start out with. Um, $800 per book call. Don't worry. As you do this, you'll get better and that cost will go down. And also keep in mind that your cold ads will have a higher cost than your retargeting ads. You might have a $500 
cost per booked call uh, with your cold ads and a $50 cost per book call with your retargeting ads. But when you average those together, you get a lower average cost. And so as long as your close rate is decent, you're going to make a ton of money. Uh, now, you, you bump your close rate up to 30%, the game changes. Now you're really making money. So you see how there's a lot of room for error, where if you're selling a low ticket product, there's not a lot of room for error. So with high ticket, it becomes simple. You book calls, you close sales. And even if it costs you a few hundred dollars per booked call, you're still making a ton of money. So these, these uh, happy symbols rep, uh, represent ads that are doing well. They have a good cost per lead or a good cost per book call. And I'll get more into what, what costs are good, what costs mean later on uh, in the planner. I'll give you a, um, a uh, uh, you know, I'll give you a breakdown of what to look for in terms of cost. So right now you just have to understand that some ads will have a good cost like these, and some ads will have a bad cost, right? Some ads will not get any book calls at all, not get any leads at all, or the lead will be like $30 a lead instead of the green ones, which are $5 or $10 a lead. And these are, these are the ads that aren't doing so well. They're just, they're just not doing so well. So what do you do? You just turn them off, okay? You turn those ads off when you, and again, I'll get more later into when do you turn them off, what parameters would cause you to turn them off. What cost or, what, you know, what if I turn them off too early? You know, what if I turn them off too late? I'll get into that later. But just understand that if they're not doing well, you can turn them off. And then you can replace them with a different variation because, you know, eventually if, if you keep running the ad, and this is the thing about Facebook ads, you keep running ads to the same ad, they do, what, they, they do what's called burnout. They burn out, meaning they stop working after a while. And so you have to refresh them. You have to come up with new angles or new variations. And all you do is you find the ones that aren't working, you turn them off, and you replace them with ones that um, you think will work. And eventually, you'll get to the point where you have a bunch of angles running, and they're working really well. And as ones begin to burn out, you can replace them with new ideas. And you're going to get tons of ideas uh, from you know, from what you do, from uh, if you, let's say you have a coaching call or let's say you have a conversation with a client or let's say, you know, you're going to get ideas and I'll talk more about how to get ideas later. Uh, for instance, here's, here's one way you can get an idea for new angles right now. Go find other experts in your industry, listen to their podcasts, listen to their YouTube channels and find out all the things you disagree with and then make ads on why you disagree with this certain point. There's a limited amount of angles, trust me. And so there's always an opportunity to create new ads to replace ones that aren't working or that have burned out uh, so that you can constantly have a lot of these smiley faces, okay? So that right there is the basics of how campaigns work, not just in Facebook ads, but honestly in most ad platforms. All right, that's all you need to know for now. Go ahead and move into the next lessons. And again, you'll learn more and more about uh, uh, how this works and how to implement this and start creating uh, a situation where you are running ads, you're booking calls, and you're closing sales. If you feel overwhelmed right now by this, don't worry. Uh, that's what you're supposed to feel. When you, when you don't feel overwhelmed, that's not good. That means you're not learning. When you do feel overwhelmed, that means you are learning, okay? If you go to the gym, you work out, and you go home, and you're not sore, it means you didn't get a good workout. But if you are sore, it means you did. Well, right now, you're working out your brain. So if you're like, oh, Dan, I just don't get it. I'm so overwhelmed. Good. That means you're learning. Don't worry. You're going to get it. There was a time where I felt overwhelmed as well. And then I went out and made millions of dollars doing this. You're fine. Relax. You're good. See you in the next lesson.